So, that said, hey, Marshall, you asked me to give you a, uh, <laughs> a yell from the green room. I'm about to start a conversation with my dear old friend, uh, Marshall Presnell, about uh, cryptocurrency and uh, related similar subjects. Um, Marshall, I'm um, just giving you a warning here, Marshall. I'm going to do an introduction, and then I'm going to see if I can give you a call. Uh, we did a little, a little bit of Skyping earlier today to make sure that it looked like it was going to work. Dropper 2 says, all I want to know is how to use Bitcoin to purchase real physical things. Uh, good luck. Um, we have Bitcoin credit cards here in the Australia, but almost no one uses them. And you're set, Marshall. Cool. Um, Marshall <clears throat> has been in IT uh, probably longer than I have. Um, I quit. He's still going. He has at least 40 years experience building software platforms and is very current on current technologies. I know that for a fact. Uh, he worked on the original Mosaic, Mosaic web browser at the company Spygra Spyglass. He created the very first uh, interactive webcast platform in 1999, which was webcast.com. It's still being used today by PGI.com. It's a substandard implication, Im implementation of the original project. Um, <clears throat> I've known Marshall for a long time, uh, I guess about 30 years. Um, since the 1990s, uh, we met by virtue of being involved in the very first international Star Trek forum on a uh, network that no longer exists called Fidonet. And uh, that one was so large because it was international. It, Marshall was the overall moderator of that thing. And you couldn't moderate it with just one person. So he drafted a few of us to do it for him. And so I've been in communication with Mono. I was I was a vice moderator for a while there. And so I've been in communication with Marshall off and on over the years, uh, more recently, pretty frequently. Uh, he's a very, very old friend, um, a guy who knows a hell about a lot about more crypto than I do. Um, in point of fact, <laughs> um, just as the introduction here, I, I you know, because uh, Marshall knows this. Everybody who watches the show knows this. I never thought Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies were going to go anywhere. My feeling was you're talking about a few milliamps of current sustained over a few microseconds of time that is a fiat currency that represents precisely dick. And it doesn't. It represents absolutely nothing. I thought nobody's going to buy electricity. No, I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. And Marshall was right. And he's made a fair amount of money over it. So, let me see if I can get Marshall on the horn, and we will talk about this stuff from somebody who actually did well at it and was right when I was completely wrong. He will be audio only. Hey, Marshall, are you hearing me? Yes, I hear you fine. Uh, ah, okay, I had perfect. The, uh, the other I, went on for a second and got a little confused. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, yes, here uh, we have Drummond. Yes, Marshall, most, how are you doing tonight? Aside uh, from waiting through well. my interminable review. I, you know, the green room needs paint now. <laughs> from well, where I was chewing it on the wall. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, feel free to paint it. <laughs> I can't. I'm not in the green room anymore. Sorry. Here's ah, your job. Okay. Yeah. I only bitch after the fact. Um, well, so, yeah. Uh, um, I've been wrong. You've been right. Um, and right now totally we're in the wrong. middle. And right now we're in the middle of what is commonly known on YouTube as the Bitcoin bloodbath. We, <laughs> we, drop, we dropped off of an all-time high of about uh, 58 thousand dollars down to forty six thousand dollars after a run up from oh three thousand dollars i don't exactly consider that a bloodbath but <laughs> everybody well, on youtube's losing their mind and i'm sitting here going like guys stay in yeah and everybody just they, they don't get it and I didn't get it either. I had your opinion, and your opinion was, you know, milliamps of current over microseconds, and boy, was I wrong. Um, and I tried yeah, to but you figured you out how wrong. to be right and make money off of it, and I just went, no. Well, that's easy. Making <laughs> money off Bitcoin is easy. Uh, first of all, 
anytime you're trading currencies between you know US dollar and Bitcoin or US dollar and Ethereum or Bitcoin and Ethereum, it doesn't matter what the pair is, anytime you're trading it, it's basically a foreign exchange and or, or forex in the the financial world and 97 percent of any market uh, a financial market particularly is psychological 97 uh, percent i have i've seen people say 99 i've seen people say 90 uh, it really is a crap load of percentage and the rest is technicals and what I mean by technicals is looking at the price, looking at the candlesticks, looking at derivatives from that price, like the, uh, uh, the relative strength indicator, the MACD, or the exponential moving average, and coming up with an algorithm. Don't everybody freak out. It's not a computer <laughs> algorithm. An algorithm is simply a set of instructions. Right. And you find the, the range that Bitcoin is trading in, and you buy high and sell low. That, I'm sorry, if, if you're a YouTuber, you buy high and sell low. If you're a normal person, you buy low and sell high. <laughs> um, and it's weird. People do buy high and sell low, and it drives me up the wall. I but, don't um, understand it either. That's the one thing I know is you buy low and sell high on anything. Exactly. Um, but about... I, I hang on a second. I've got my chart up here. I can tell you when it happened. Um, Your question, by the way, drop a truth: convert Bitcoin into dollars or another currency so I can buy easy. Other things. Basically, yes. Yeah, um, I'll get into the mechanics of that in just a second because it really is not hard. But there are certain things you have to be aware of, um, and and they're significant things, especially when it comes to taxes. But I noticed something um, in November of uh, 2018, and that is that one of my indicators that I reliably use for trading um, dropped down to a low I'd never seen before, and it's called the RSI, the Relative Strength Indicator, and it dropped down to below 10. Now, what does that mean? Well, anytime you're below 30, you're considered oversold. Hmm. I mean... Um, yeah, oversold. Oh, no, overbought. I, I, I get them confused. Um, and if you drop down to 10, it's like, holy crap, something's going to happen. <laughs> but my algorithm wouldn't allow me to get in there. And that algorithm was the exponential moving average has to have a positive slope, says you're in a bull market. Then the relative strength indicator has to drop below 30. And then it has to exit that and go above 30. And then this indicator called the MACD, or Moving Average Convergence Divergence, has to cross over the, the signal line. At that point, if everything's right and you hold your jaw just right, you get in. And you ride it up, basically riding the price point and riding the price action up to the point where it starts to peak out and drop, and then you get out. That's the algorithm. It's it's pretty simple, especially when you you've got the charts from, you know, platforms like TradingView or something. You can just look at it and say, oh, that's what I do, and that's what I do. I, I become the computer that runs the algorithm, um, and and I do that on a daily chart, not on an hourly or anything like that. You start playing anything less than a daily, and you start getting in the weeds. Yeah, I would think so. So so I played this technique, which I developed a long time ago in the stock market, and I, I basically, in that channel that kept you kept going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down, I was buying a slightly above the low when it convert you know converted from down to up, <laughs> and slightly before the high, so you you don't be greedy, right, and. Um, uh, yeah, I made a. I, I don't have the number in front of me, but it's somewhere on the close order of about twenty thousand percent gains on wow. that in a relatively flat market. <laughs> and that worked for a while. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Um, 
so so I, I played that algorithm over and over and over and over and over again. I call it the grind. And about the, the early part of March last year, lo and behold, the RSI dropped. Let's see, where was it? Dro- where did it drop to? Um, God, where is it? Ah, get my finger on it. Down to about under 20. I can't tell because I have to scale this out and I can't tell exactly where it was. But it was under 20. It jumped up over 30 again, which is the second trigger. At that point in time, the moving average was going up. So now I have two of the critical triggers. I waited for the MACD crossover and I jumped in. That was, like I said, March of last year. The price then was $8,000. You made money. It is, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a hell of a lot but, of money. But uh, as you know, with with any kind of, of of system, you you always basically you you put apply negative feedback to it because you don't want it to oscillate out of control. Right. So you go back and start reviewing why did it drop that low? What what happened? Mm-hmm. And, and interestingly, it to go down that way so we can predict it. Interestingly enough, at that point in time, um, the first COVID stimulus had hit on March sixth, hmm. and so the RSI dropped well below thirty on. Uh, I think it's hard to tell, it's a, but it was late February, and it popped up above on the seventeenth. So that obviously was a problem, you know, yeah. or it was a cor- correlation. And in this case, it was a very strong correlation because it sent me down the rabbit hole. Mm. And this is where I learned what Bitcoin was. Oh. At the very beginning, I thought it was just, you know, a, a lark, something you could make money with. Right. And about a month after that event, I finally figured it out. And then the world opened up. Huh. What, um, so what did you figure out? Well, uh, we've talked privately before, and I tell you that uh, Bitcoin is inversely related to fear. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, uh, positively yeah. related to fear. As fear goes up, the price goes up. As uncertainty yeah. goes up, the price uh, goes up. As doubt goes up, the price goes up. There's actually an indicator for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called the VIX. The volatility index. Ah, okay. And I started looking at that, and that was incredibly correlated to everything going on. Hmm. And then I noticed something very, very, very weird. I started noticing volume spikes, like people trading in huge volumes. Right. And I'm going, like, why the hell are they trading in huge volumes? This thing is a horizontally moving market. Because... At that point in time, up until about, I'd say, September of last year, I mean, it was slowly trending upward, but it wasn't anything major. But I was noticing these volume spikes. It made no sense to me. Hmm. So that got me into another little thing called on-chain analysis. And Bitcoin is a blockchain, like almost all cryptocurrencies are. And if we need to get into the technicals of that, we can do it lightly. But um, the key aspects of a blockchain is it is completely public. It shows right. every single transaction. Right. It is secure because it uses cryptography in several different aspects that make it damn near impossible to forge. Right. And, it is val- and it is validated by a process that takes a lot of time and a lot of computational capability. You say it's a few milliwatts. It isn't. It is megawatts over a 10 minute period. Right. And so a lot of people can't handle that. You know, right. a lot of computers can't handle it. Right. Um, and that difficulty increases over time, and we're coming up to a time when it's going to increase again. So the miners are going to have to work twice as hard after this particular cycle than they Put did even this more particular more power into it and cost right because of the power and right so 
then, and I think you have an oh, uh, interesting thing, Drop of Truth. You say Bitcoin is only valuable when it's trading. Uh, an, an old friend of mine who played the stock market um, told me the golden rule of trading is you only make money or lose money when the price is changing, period. Mm -hmm. If it's stable, you're not making anything. Right. Um, and yes, it does lose value if you realize the value. Now, what does that mean? There's unrealized uh, profit or loss. If I buy at 100 and it goes down to 80 and I sell, I have lost. I right. mean, that is a realized value. If it starts at 100 and I buy in and it goes to 80 and then it goes to 120 right. and I do not sell it, it is an unrealized profit. Right. You, yeah. only, you only get taxed on realizing your profit. So, you know. Which is why some people take cool. losses on things in order to decrease the tax change part of it. yeah they change the tax burden um you bring up a, a drop of truth brings up a very good point uh, why would a billionaire like elon musk use bitcoin and that's what i discovered could these people literally corner the market no right. and the reason they can't corner the market is because there are so many they're called miners mm -hmm. but think of them as validators don't think of them as miners it puts a different thing in your mind and those validators are validating the blockchain, the chain of transactions. You would need to possess control of 51% of those miners in order to have any chance of cornering the market. And notice I said any chance. Right. Uh, and the, even if just you, the power even if requirements. You, yeah. But even if you manage to get a bad block in, mm -hmm. eventually you will lose the gamble. And one of the other miners out there will get a good block in and basically erase all the work you've done because you have to build on the work that has happened before and you have to fake it every time and that's every 10 minutes you have to fake it <laughs> and the odds are you're not going to be able to fake it continually for you know a thousand yeah. blocks right. you're, you're going to lose that lottery probably within two to three blocks. And at that point in time, the entire system reverts to the correct blocks. And you're blacklisted, by the way. Right. So that 51% gets blacklisted. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, ain't going to happen. Um, so Musk but, but, is probably just get into it because he foresees a large jump in, in uh, value. Nope. Has nothing to do with seeing a large chunk of value. Oh. Um, and, yeah, that's what I would have thought. What I also noticed at uh, in, in 2020 was we were starting to get some very bad economic indicators uh, in in the real world. And yep. have you got that? Can you bring that slide up? The Fred one? Uh, no, not the Fred one. The other one. Uh, sure. I can't actually I can't actually watch the screen. So tell me when you yeah. get it up. It's up. It's okay. the uh, longest economic expansion on record. Ended by COVID-19 uh, chart is what right. I have. If you take a look at that graphic, uh, oh, uh, no, it's go, go down. It's it's the line graph one that, that shows the really bad bump at the end. This one? Uh, well, Econ I economy grew from mid-2000, mid I'm sorry, mid-2009 into early 2020. Do you it's see got the a big, big dip at the bottom down here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the economic growth has plummeted. Yeah. And uh, to take a really good look at that uh, chart because it goes 0, 5, 10, 30. Right. So yeah. there's, there's, you know, it's, it's much bigger than you think it is. So, so we have this really large economic problem with unemployment right. going through the roof, productivity going through the floor. People are desperate. And yep. that's one of the reasons they had the stimulus. So I started putting all that together, and it's like, wow, all we need to do is have a highly inflationary economy or dollar, and we would be totally screwed. Well, which is uh, a damn near a given at this point. Well, it's more than damn near a given. Bring up that slide. Yep. It's the Fred the one. The Fred one. Yeah. Fred is up. Okay. If you take a look at that last little piece, it is not a 
It's, yep. it's, it literally is Where not it a sloping line. it suddenly goes damn near a, asymptotic. It is a vertical line, and we have tr no, we've quadrupled the available money supply. We've printed you know, a huge, right. huge, huge amount of money. Which will um, absolutely lead to inflation. That's the cause of inflation. And they don't teach that anymore, but the cause of inflation is having too much money in circulation. Correct. Now, and Bill knows this, but the rest of you don't, and I knew it, and, you know, you, the rest of you may not. But Bitcoin is limited. There can only be 21 million coins in existence. This is not a choice that is made by people. It is a side effect of the algorithm itself. You cannot have more than 21 million coins in existence. What does that mean? That means that Bitcoin is by nature deflationary. Right. You can't, so, you can't get enough in circulation to get hyperinflation. Correct. Yeah. So the answer to your question, drop a truth, why did Elon Musk drop 1.3 billion into Bitcoin? He sees a storm coming and he sees a, a, a currency that is not subject to inflation and he knows what's going to happen in that situation, and you should too. You're going to have an inflating currency that's going to drop in actual value, and you have a deflationary currency that's going to maintain or increase in value. Where do you put your money? Right. Now, how does it become that way? Well, there's several different things, and I did a lot of research in this during this little ramp up. Yeah. I did a lot, a lot of research on it. You... You have to understand what money is. Money is as sheep's wheelbarrows, gold, and effort. That's all it is. Right. It is a non non fungible thing. Not, by fungible, I mean it can be you know uh, uh, a piece of gold is always worth a piece of gold. But now you have different weights and purities and things like that. But it's it's you know a, a one ounce piece piece of gold does not necessarily equal a one ounce piece of gold when it comes to value. Right. Um, so it's non-fungible. You can't just simply swap the two pieces of gold and have the value transferred. You 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 have to be very careful about it. You know, uh, but twelve chickens is not the same value today for this particular person as twelve chickens might be tomorrow for a different person. Right. You know, you do it at the right day, you can probably get you know an old internal combustion car. You do it the <laughs> other day, and you might get a wheelbarrow. Right. So it's non-fungible. It doesn't interchange well. Currency, however, is highly fungible. It means a dollar is a dollar is a dollar, mm -hmm. and it represents the same relative value store as as you pass it around. So I right. I give Bill a dollar. He can then give Drop the Truth a dollar. He can give you know uh, uh, Alexa a dollar, and he comes back to me, and you know it's it's got the same value more or less. Well, the interesting things about currency or dollars or euros or yen or dinars, which is fiat currency, right. is they are they are dictated their value by fiat, which is right. a decree. Now, uh, we, we, we hereby decree that this is the dollar of the United States of America, and we are not at this point backing it with any kind of physical money asset like gold therefore we can determine what the value of that dollar is at any point in time by simply printing more and making it worth less right or yeah. taking it in and making it worth more right well that's a national thing yeah so what goes into it it goes into the governmental system United States has the reference currency of the world. It's called the reserve currency, called the dollar. Right. The reason we have the reserve currency is a combination of two things, military might and stability of the economy. Right. That's, that's the two key reasons we have the dollar as the reserve currency. The yen is not the reserve currency because, well, they don't have stability. They don't have, you know, the they don't have... No, they have the military might, but they have not shown they are willing to use it. Right. We have shown we're willing to use it. 
So yeah. we will fight if you come in and start to screw with it. They tend to be isolationists. They don't fight unless they have a distinct advantage or have to. Right. We're aggressive about it. So aggression actually made us the reserve currency of the world. Therefore, we are the reference currency of the world. The other currencies are not. But those other currencies are also dictated by national policy, how you right. handle the economy, how you handle inflation and deflation, how you peg this, in, uh, this uh, value to your centralized bank and how it then can inflate out using fractional reserve uh, techniques to get out to the end end customer, which is you and me. Every one of those is different, which means every one of those values is different, is constantly fluctuating based on psychology. Right. What if, and this is what uh, Satoshi Nakamoto said in his paper, what if you had a non-national bound currency that was not controlled by humans but was controlled by algorithm right you have Which certainty in how it's going to work certainty in how it's going to work we know there's 21 million that's it right period that is it bitcoin was designed as a reserve currency of the planet <laughs> that's what a lot of people don't get uh, now that makes sense to me that that <laughs> makes sense i i i I don't know necessarily that a lot of people who invest in it necessarily understand that portion of it. Uh, you know, it was always sort of bandied about, but most people that I know that are doing Bitcoin don't do it for that reason. Right. Um, they see it as but I did just until you described it now as a reserve currency, uh, not a reserve currency, but a, but a fiat. I'm sorry. Uh, a, an investment interest in more than anything else when mm -hmm. in fact it is a it is a guard against hyperinflation really correct yeah now let, let me give you some interesting numbers here uh, very recently uh, a series of people have made predictions over where Bitcoin's price is going to be mm -hmm. and I got to be clear here we are talking about Bitcoin exclusively. We're not talking about Ethereum or right. LTC or ADA the or Cro. Or, we're not yeah. talking about those because they serve a completely different value proposition. Here are the estimates. The stock to flow model. Stock to flow does not mean stocks as in stock market. It means how much you have. Okay. okay? So the Bitcoin stock to the amount of flow in and out. They are predicting by the end of this year a two hundred and eighty nine thousand dollar Bitcoin price. Good God. And we are on track. We're actually ahead of track. Um, two hundred and eighty nine thousand. Wow. Yeah. Now there's there's there is another group of people called uh, ATH and it's it's this particular prediction is called eighteen X by ATX. Mm -hmm. These are financial people who have moved into the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency realm and they are predicting 360,000 by end of year wow and Damn. then a name and then a point name my 003 crypto I mean uh, bitcoin might actually be worth something reasonable <laughs> that's true now here's a name you would not expect to be making predictions citibank really I wonder what they're going to say. And when I saw this number, my jaw hit the floor because it confirms the other two. 318,000. Wow. By end wow. of year. God, I wish I had that so, time machine. Yeah. So what's pushing this thing up? Because normal people cannot afford to push this thing up. Right. So I started looking at the blockchain itself, which is a list of every single transaction that's on the, the Bitcoin and it's public right and I noticed that there are a lot of what are affectionately called whales that are slowly levering into Bitcoin and they finally start I don't know me, what a whale is in this context a huge investor the oh, Mark okay. Cubans of the world the Elon Musk's of the world okay. these are whales okay they, they are edging into Bitcoin and very recently, we have found out that, okay, we, we know Tesla 
has dropped $1.3 billion into Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. What you probably don't know is Citibank has put in over $1.3 billion. There's a company um, in, I think, New Jersey, and I cannot remember the name right now, but they have put $4.3 billion in over time. Uh, there are there's a company, and I, I believe it's either UAE or Dubai that's going to be putting in over four billion. Wow! Institutionals and corporations are beginning to move into this. They're foreseeing a massive hyperinflation, and they're trying to bingo. Uh, they're saving their value. Right. Bitcoin is a value store <laughs> because of its deflationary uh, things. Right. Now. You know, that, that this is interesting, though. In, in, in the U.S. dollar, in the U.S. currency, we have the dollar, which is the baseline reference, right? Mm -hmm. But the lowest named currency is the cent, one penny. There is a lowest named currency in Bitcoin. It's called the Satoshi. And I bet you know where that came from. It, that, that is from the inventor. Yeah. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay. Um, the value of a Satoshi is one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin. <laughs> that would be a one times ten to the negative eighth right. uh, Bitcoin. And you're going like, oh, what difference does that make? Um, you want to know the target that uh, Satoshi has set for the price of Bitcoin? Yeah. I, I can tell you. I can tell you to the penny. He... <laughs> One Satoshi, when it hits parity with one penny, that is his target value. Huh. One million, one million dollars. Wow. Now, what would be one of the aspects of a reserve currency? You can do very big things with very small numbers of Bitcoin. Right. You can do it at a sovereign level, at a national level. You know, okay, I need to give $323 billion. Okay, well, that's, you know, 323,000 Bitcoin. You know, it's a small number. People can easily figure it out. But you can also go up to the trillions without a problem. Yeah. That just points out that we're talking about this is designed to be the world's reserve currency. And because of the nature of what it is, how it is set, the algorithm that is fixed, the fact that it can't deflate or inflate, mm. it's perfectly designed. It is a huh. perfectly designed fiat currency. I, now, wow. is it I any reason? Had never gotten into it that deep. I, under, I, I get now how it's, how it's worth something. Um, and there's going to be a lot of fact. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's check the, uh, the, the 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 chat here, uh, yeah the 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 Texas uh, cornering of the silver market that's very well documented and you can't do it that yeah. easily. Uh, fiat Latin for arbitrary order or decree. Yep, it's a dictate. Right. Um, is Bitcoin linked to the petrodollar the same way that any other currency is linked to the petrodollar? It's it's linked through the foreign exchange if it's not U.S. dollars. So the yen is linked to the petrodollar because you do a lot of trading between those, those currency pairs. Um, will it be affected when the global fiat con Bitcoin? Actually, yes, it will be affected. It will go up like a skyrocket if uh, the global fiat economy collapses. Right. Um, central banks now interested in their own cryptocurrencies. Take a look at Miami. Not just central banks, governmental organizations. Now in Miami, you have the option to take your pay in, in crypto. It's it's weird. Um, and one thing, this is not a cashless thing. Here's the cool part about about Bitcoin. You can take a piece of paper. Now think think about the federal government. They take a piece of paper. They put special link on it. They they embed it with all kinds of things. Make it hard to counterfeit. And put the number ten on it and, and hand it to you. You've got a ten dollar bill. You can do that in your house right now with Bitcoin. You can take a piece of paper, you can put two QR codes on it, you know, seal it so that you can't see one of the critical QR codes, make it up all nice and fancy. Doesn't matter because that's not what makes this unique. It's the private key that's hidden. And you've got a crypto uh, you've got a crypto fiat currency that's paper. And you printed it on your printer. 
and it's just as valid as a U.S. Treasury note. I can give, I can print one of these things out, give it to Bill, and Bill can take it and scan in the uh, the private key, and he has total control over the amount of that wallet. Oh. <laughs> Again, it's um, real. It's mind real currency. Blown. I, this is a level I had never even thought to occur to think to me. Uh, I, you, you are so on top of this, it amazes me. Uh, I, I always say that um, I'm pretty bright. You're operating well above that. Here we have proof, because um, I never even occurred to me to go into this kind of depth. Well, um, like I said, it, it, it took me months to figure it out. Uh, it is, it's obvious in retrospect, but it's not obvious if you're looking forward. Yeah, with and, you explaining it to me, I, I, I oh, okay, I, I get it. We're headed towards hyperinflation. What's happening is they're buying the Bitcoin because it can't inflate beyond a certain point. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you have 10,000 in Bitcoin today and it, the dollar inflates 10x, you still have ten thousand dollars in Bitcoin, but it's ten thousand dollars the previous previous value reference because it has inflated along with everything else, giving you a stable currency. Yeah. Oddly enough, Bitcoin, as volatile as it is right now, Bitcoin's destiny is to become a stable currency, right. and it's well on its way. A very high value. Okay, here here's an interesting interesting thing to do. And I, 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 I want everybody to do this if, if you don't believe it, because when I did it, I didn't believe it. If you look on Wiki, WikiLeaks, not WikiLeaks, Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and you, you, you search for the world's largest banks, mm -hmm. okay? The top four are from China. And if you look at their assets under management, that is, that is a fancy techno speak for how much is deposited here. Mm -hmm. It's around, it's a little over $14 trillion. Okay, we're going to take everything to dollars for this conversation. So $14 trillion. Bitcoins, what, and what they call in, in crypto market cap, market capitalization, mm -hmm. is effectively the same as assets under management, which is how much is deposited in Bitcoin. It's over a trillion dollars. So Bitcoin, this, this little flirty thing that Satoshi invented, you know, a little over 10 years ago, yeah. has become 10% of the world's top four banks. Wow. And the, and the global uh, value store, now this is, it's going to get a little complicated to explain this. It's a hundred trillion dollars, more or less. Okay. So that that fourteen trillion is fourteen percent of the hundred trillion, and the hundred trillion and the one trillion of Bitcoin is one percent of the global. Um. So you, you look at this, and it's going nuts. Now imagine that when it gets to two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, half a million, a million. Right. It's going to be eating out that value store as people move to Bitcoin or or an equivalent crypto or a different crypto right. because people are going to see that this thing holds value yeah so well their paper there, currency is is not worthless and we're entering into the weirdest situation where a currency that I can print on my printer is more yeah. stable than the currency the government <laughs> can print now let's think about that. Just how freaking ridiculous is that? Now this whole thing, this whole thing, is part of a bigger plan, and I don't, I, I cannot definitively say that Satoshi et al. Uh, thought this through. But what they have accidentally created, if they didn't design it this way, is they have created a decentralized, stable fiat currency in Bitcoin. Yeah. Now, if you think, if you put those words together, it makes no financial sense at all. Right. It, it's kind of like good, fast, cheap, pick any two, 
Well, guess what? We can pick three. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like it's impossible, but if you look at the right. math behind it, it's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. No, the way so, you're describing it, I, I get it. It's just, I honestly, before you described it, I wouldn't have thought of it that way at all. But yeah. describing it out the way you are, yeah, man. Now again, we're off okay. into <laughs> mind blown well, this, territory. This is this is science fiction to the nth degree. Yeah, this is this is using engineering, cryptography, and math to create something that literally should not be able to exist. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Yeah. Now, the amazing part is Bitcoin is set up to be the world's reference of value store, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an island in the middle of the, of the lake, of the financial lake. What happens if you take that idea and start applying it in different ways? So you've got the security of Bitcoin, you've got the scalability of Bitcoin, and you know, you've know you got the, the fungibility of Bitcoin. And that's the three big uh, areas you want to be in. Right. Hear my hear my cats. Uh, yeah, a little they, bit. They get it. They get annoyed when I talk about fungibility. I can't <laughs> help it. Um, what if you took that idea and twisted it? Now, what I mean by twisting it is you do the same concept, but you apply it in a slightly different way. Do you welcome, want me to spray you? Welcome to Ethereum. Really. It's, what have yeah. they done differently then? They, the, the, Ethereum, the whole just, point of Ethereum. Anybody who's watching just know oh, it's yeah. a different. It's a different cryptocurrency. Yeah, and it's it's around fourteen hundred dollars a coin right now versus Bitcoin's forty five eight. Um, uh, you know, it's it's a much lower priced coin, but it's also a much newer coin, mm -hmm. and its value proposition is much more subtle. Ethereum is basically a platform for they call it smart contracts I hate the term smart because everything is smart and that makes yeah. everything dumb because the average is dumb yeah. where they, they are don't don't think of them as smart contracts think of them as algorithmically driven contracts okay, okay. so I make an agreement with Bill that I'm going to give him one Bitcoin and he's going to give me a Ferrari. Wait, 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 Ferrari? Wait, Ferrari? Well, the Ferrari itself can't be tokenized, but the title to it could. Right, okay. So they use a, a technique to digitally set up the title so that it can convey ownership via a cryptocurrency like Ethereum or like a derivative of Ethereum. And now they can set it up so that the two private keys basically are executed simultaneously against each other to make a swap. Make one Bitcoin for ownership. one Ferrari. Oh, man. And bam, it's done. It is ir it's not reversible in the context of that contract. Of course, I can turn around and sell the Ferrari back to you for a Bitcoin. But that right. contract is completed. It is executed. It is transferred. And it is legal. Contract. Wow, that's. I mean, I get what you're saying there. You, you're you're doing the contracting, not with necessarily a piece of paper that talks about the contract, but with the transaction itself being blockchain based Tokenized. and it's tokenized. Called token, yeah. Tokenization. Yeah, it's called the tokenization to digital asset. So if you can represent a Ferrari with the the title of a Ferrari within an electronic form you can then tokenize that electronic form and change its possession securely between people wow yes here's here's about the time when the, the brain started exploding yeah well mine started exploding a little bit ago but i mean i barely get what you're talking about with respect to the essentially transferring a contract into a, 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 a electronic keychain and I, mean, I sort of get this it's just yeah. mind-blowing to think about it <laughs> it gets better 
<laughs> I'm sorry? It gets better. Oh, it gets more mind-blowing than that? Uh, th this one will literally blow your mind. Okay, the, the first one was like, wow. The second one was like, oh, crap. The third one is like, you've got to be flipping kidding me. Imagine a world where everything is decentralized. Everything is digitally tokenized. So your property, the deed of your property, is now, in, a, in effect, a cryptocurrency pair. Property for dollars. Property for ownership. Now, imagine that same world where you don't have to even go to a bank to close on a mortgage. You can simply execute a smart contract and say, I want two bitcoins for my house. Bam, it's done. No financing, no banks, no nothing. You need a loan. Well, people can check you out to see how your, your balance is doing because it's all public. You know, it knows your wallet. I need a loan. And this is happening today, by, mind you. And I did this once and it blew my flipping mind. I borrowed $100,000. And I returned it within 25 milliseconds. Really? Yeah. I borrowed $100,000 to do a 10x trade on uh, Ethereum. So that means I was leveraged 10x. So I had $10,000 on the table. I leveraged 10x. It was $100,000. I wrote a contract. The contract said to a borrower, I want to borrow $100,000 for one transaction and I will return it to you with interest and the interest because of time was so slow so fast it was, it it was practically nothing the, yeah I mean it was, it was like 50 bucks yeah for a so, $100,000 loan that you had for how many milliseconds 27 27 milliseconds 27 milliseconds I, as a borrow I, I executed the contract and I haven't done this again because it scared the crap out of me uh, so, <laughs> I executed the contract. I got uh, basically an Ethereum balance transfer. I bought in to a stock. It waited for the amount of time that was needed in order to, you know, do the the transaction. I switched. Um, I, I switched to my exchange from Binance.us to Coinbase because I was doing what's called an arbitrage thing. Okay. It then sold what I had just bought, you know, five milliseconds ago on Coinbase for a profit. And then it repaid the loan and then deposited the results into my account. 27 milliseconds. Uh, now, just for those just, who don't understand milliseconds, that's one one thousandth of a second. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this, this whole concept wrapping is your head around it yeah now remind remember no banks involved right yeah None. i i requested and received borrowing a somebody from hundred thousand dollars for 27 milliseconds and paid the interest and it was like 50 bucks and i made like i think i think i made like 1200 dollars on that trade wow i mean it's ridiculous so this whole concept is called decentralized finance. Man, <coughs> banks are going to be pissed off. <laughs> banks, banks can't touch it. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Here, here's why banks can't touch it. And it's the smartest yet stupidest thing the SEC has ever done. They have not declared Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a currency. They've not declared it as a security. They have described it as an asset class. It is Legally, property. I don't know. Okay, you can you can regulate securities. You can regulate cash. You can't regulate property that easily. So, it's it's classified <laughs> essentially as property, right? And ordinarily, property would have some like you know a, a value attached to it that you would then maybe owe in like property taxes for your house or something like that. Correct. And and every time you realize the gain, 
And in this case, you realize it by the transfer of property into your primary wallet, let's call it, your mm -hmm. primary accounts. It becomes a taxable event. Now, let's, let's run this through real interesting. What happens when you apply smart contracts or algorithmically driven contracts to tax collection? <laughs> I don't know how you do it. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. You, you can simply say that any, any, any I'm going to call it smart contract, even though I hate the uh -huh. name, any smart contract that transfers property must have the subroutine in it that is provided by the IRS. So they would get a chunk of it by virtue of it being part of the crypto driven contract. Yeah. And if they don't have the algorithm, the chunk of it to do it, which they won't, at least at first. Well, okay, you it's have hard to for me to imagine, to... frankly, that people in government will even figure this out. <coughs> Oh, they'll figure it out. The IRS is ahead of almost everybody in crypto. Um, oh, okay. They're, 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 they're really figuring it out. But here, here's the regulation part. The, the SEC comes in and says, okay, in order to transfer this asset class from person A to person B or from wallet A to wallet B, uh, we have to assess a tax. Therefore, we are requiring all of the miners, the validators, to ensure that a contract is not allowed into the chain unless it has this particular thing. I see. Bang, you do it. Okay. So, okay, that, I'm just giving you a taste. This this is literally the tip of the iceberg. If yeah, you go wrapping my into head this around science, just this portion of it, I can, I can, I mean, I can. <laughs> yeah it's mind-blowing in as much as i can think okay what if you apply it to this what do you apply it to that and oh it just gets There's, huge there 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 is a a trending topic now called nfts and everybody nft this nft that nft this and it's like what the hell are nfts because you know mm -hmm. anytime i i am always trailing the leading edge i'm close to it but i'm trailing it because i want to thoroughly understand what's going on. I do not understand NFTs yet completely, okay. but I get the idea. Imagine this. Imagine that you are an artist. Uh, uh, no, no. Let, let, let's, let's say you're a musician. Music can be represented digitally, natively, right? Sure. Anything that can be represented digitally is by definition able to be tokenized easily, right? Right. Think about it. <laughs> you, it would be a way to charge for certain types of music but by virtue of once. it being I'm sorry but not just once yeah no you could set it up you could have a special audio player in a radio station now whenever you play the music the original uh, author gets a transaction right yeah Every time it is played, every time it is transferred, you could have a royalty payment. So now yeah. book authors could write the book, s sell it for basically the royalty because it's digital now. Right. And, okay, imagine a textbook. How many times that thing could be resold? <laughs> oh, man. And every time it is resold, the author we'll gets get a, a piece direct of it. payment. And the cool thing is it takes the publisher out of the loop. Right. This, yeah. This entire system, and, and I, I realize I'm sounding like an evangelist now, but I, I've looked into this. I want everybody to remember if you were alive and you knew what was going on back to the beginning of the Internet. Yeah. There was one word, one word that was associated with the business proposition for the Internet. And if you remember it, amazing. If you don't remember it, you will when I say it disintermediation oddly enough i'd never heard that word really yeah disintermediation removing the middleman right yeah okay okay Amazon yeah well i mean i, I certainly the know the man. concept attached to it yes absolutely right. yeah you know amazon came in and zonked all of the brick and mortar distributors by giving 
people a better option to get a large amount of material. This pissed off the small business people, which is happens in any kind of revolution like this. You do yeah. have people who are adversely affected. Right. Um, but you go through this, you look at real networks, it disintermediated music and audio, you know, audio con content, right. and then later video content. YouTube, what you're doing right now could not have been done unless disintermediation happened. Right. Yep. Because you would need big cameras, you'd need a production studio, you'd need, uh, and that's just technology Someone advancement. Someone willing to broadcast it. That's it. That's where it disintermediated. Right. All of this is disintermediation. What happens when you disintermediate finance? Right. And Taking that's that what's happening. out of the picture. Yep. That is what cryptocurrency is all about. Disintermediation, yeah. money, and currency. And it apparently is working. Yeah. So, Judging by the value. Yeah. Wow. Now, I, I gave you the, the Citibank and the, uh, the other predictions. Right. I've done my own, and mine is much lower than theirs. It's, um, well, I hate to say it, but it's only a hundred and fifty thousand. Oh well, only. Yeah. It's only, it's only roughly uh, <laughs> double what it was a couple of days ago. No, a triple. Well, well, you want to hear something really cool? Is if you go back to December of 19, uh, 1918. If you go back to December of nineteen eighteen, none of this would be there. Uh, yeah. But if you go down to to December of twenty eighteen. You're talking about four thousand dollars, so it's already ten x since then. Right. <coughs> and now it's going to now. Now I'm thinking need it's going time to three x. No, you don't need a time machine. Um, this is not financial advice. I do absolutely. <laughs> okay. There is no, no financial one, advice whatsoever no, on this program. Th this is opinion. Purely opinion, and if you listen to anybody on the internet and you just blindly follow them, you're in for a world of hurt, and you deserve what you get. Yeah. You have to Super always Christ do your... Super needs to pick his brain up off the floor. Yeah, it's <coughs> about you where I'm at. Your... Yeah, you have to do your own research. You yeah. have to understand what you're dealing with. You have to be at least semi competent in trading to a certain degree. Um. If, if, if I were me, and I am me, so here's what I'm doing. Every, every month, no matter what, without fail, I put $1,000 into savings, if I can possibly afford it. Right. Every time. Up until now, I've put about 10% into crypto and the 90% into fiat. Mm -hmm. um, I have now switched that. I am now 50-50. Mm -hmm. And as the inflation starts really kicking in, I'm going to switch it over to 9010. Yeah. So $900 a month into it. Now, remember another thing with crypto you don't have to buy a full coin. I couldn't buy a full coin if I tried. I couldn't either right now. But yeah. um, I, I could several months ago, but right yeah, now, no, now. It's, it's out of my out of my range. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I would suggest if you were doing this, uh, evaluate Bitcoin as a value store, mm. evaluate Ethereum as a platform, not as a currency. It is a, a platform, platform for the other contracting things are, part of it. And, and all of this, um, uh, uh decentralized finance, the DeFi stuff mm. are contract executions. So that's pretty much the only game in town right now although there are a couple of others that are coming up <coughs> and i'm i'm actually into those as well i'm into a one called cardana and um one called um synthetics and i want to get into one called apy finance but i don't want to have to go through the pain of getting <laughs> apy finance yeah. because okay let me give you an you have to do contortions to do this now. Um, <laughs> APY finance is, oh, hang on, let me bring it up here so I can actually 
tell you what's going on. Okay, APY Finance is, oh, I better get on the right, right tab, it is only available on a platform called Uniswap. I don't have a Uniswap uh, account. I have a Qcoin account, I have a Binance account, I have a Coinbase account. I don't have a Uniswap account. So it wants me to be to pay for APY Finance with Ether uh, or Ethereum. Okay. okay. So if I want to get into, if I want to put five hundred dollars cash into it, okay, and I'm not saying that's that would be the number. I'd say I'm just saying if I wanted to, right. I would have to put it on a platform that would accept U.S. dollars right. for Ethereum. For Ethereum. Or, or well, it, and some platforms will only move U.S. dollars into U.S. dollar coins or U.S. dollar tether, you know, so USDC or USDT. So then I have to transfer the USDT or USDC to Ethereum, and then I have to move the Ethereum over to BitSwap, and then I have to execute the trade. Every Depending time what I you do actually that, want. Yeah, it's, it's going to cost me three times the value of the coin to get the coin. Right. Because you're going because to all the these transactions. Transactions and, that come in the middle between, yeah. Yeah, so so it's 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 kind of ridiculous for me. As much as I want that, I'm not willing to go through that pain. Um, Sons in general, like the crypto landscape, is getting very very complex. Uh, it it started very very complex, and it's getting more so. So, um, you know, I, I spend a good eighty percent of my uh, research time. Uh, well, okay, let me tell you my research time. Every day, I look at the daily charts. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't go down into the weeds. I look at the dailies, and you know, th this is one of the reasons why it surprised the hell out of me. Everybody's screaming about Bitcoin falling, and I'm like, "What do you mean?" Uh, I mean, it's 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 down, but it's not down any more than it was the last drop during the the rise. So what are you bitching about? And I go down and I look at the one minute chart and the five minute chart. And I'm going, "Ah, that's what they're bitching about." They're looking at it in too small of a scope. They're they're right. trying to, to to minute trade and you know hour trade. Don't do that. Yeah. This is too fast for you. I have high powered computers here that that actually have every tick of the transaction for the past year. Basically, every single transaction for the past Damn. year is available to me to do this. And. I look at it, and I have a fast uh, internet connection. I have a fast computer. I can I can program trade with the best of them, and I'm looking at it and going like, no freaking way, because it, it is stupid to try to do it. And instead of moving out to a minute trade or a 15 minute trade or an hour trade, I'm looking at it and going like, you know, this is going to give me a heart attack, <laughs> because I'd be running my algorithms, you know, 32 times a day and not have time to eat. Right. So, um, and I'd have to do it 24 hours a day, which, right. you know, I have a problem with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> problem is called yeah. sleep. So I said, okay, I'm just going to back off and do it like I did the stocks before and, and trade the days. And number one, your life is much more calm. You can just simply glance at the chart and you know exactly what you want to do. You got a couple of indicators that, you know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the news for it. It takes me 20 minutes to scan, you know, what I'm interested in and what I'm currently in trade. The rest of the time, mm -hmm. and it's about 80% of the time, I am using a screener. I am looking at new stuff. I am going and reading the white papers, that kind of stuff. You have to get into it and understand the news and what people are trying to do and where they are in position to the other items. And that and the is the vast majority part. of people don't even understand what a cryptocurrency is in the first place. Correct. So how are they going to be able to evaluate fundamentals? Yeah. It's it you're 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 down a rabbit hole. You have to understand money, you have to understand currency, you have to understand reserves and, and uh, uh reference currencies and stable currencies. Then you have to understand computer shit. You have to understand I just demonetized you, didn't I? I'm sorry. Um <laughs> I don't think it matters. Oh, you, you're not monetized anyway. I'm not Who monetized cares? I'll, anyway. I'll, no, curse, yeah. I'll curse like a sailor. Um, <laughs> then you have to understand 
the crypto space, the ecosystem. It's huge. Nobody fully understands it. Nobody. Yeah. They, they don't have enough time to understand it. So you focus on various areas and then you become very well versed in those areas like DeFi, which is the big one right now. Oh, but I was going to tell you about NFTs. <laughs> I'm like Arlo Guthrie. Meanwhile, back in MS <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> exactly. NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Now, you know what fungible means. He's interchanged one for another. These right. are tokens... And by tokens, I'm talking about digital assets, which, of course, can be tokenized, hence the name non-fungible tokens, where one token of, of the same type as another token does not necessarily have the same value. What good would that be? Art, music, videos, books, blog posts of your favorite gurus who know things you don't. Um... <laughs> These non-fungible tokens can then be transferred between people. So, you know, let, let, let's say I make up a, a big crypto channel and I become huge and I've got my special super secret members only section and you get in by buying non-fungible tokens. So now I, you come in and it says, OK, show me your show me your QR code for your public key. Think, OK, you're in now. What happens if you get tired of listening to me ramble on incessantly and you want to sell it to your Aunt Martha who can listen to everybody talk for an hour and a half without even thinking about it and she's interested in crypto? You can then transfer that to her. You no longer have access. They do. They do. Yeah. Because it's a it's a non-fungible token. It doesn't, you know. It's, yeah. It's, it's a ticket. You know, it's, it's a ticket master ticket. You know, you I've been telling people for a long stuff. time that, that, that bit blockchain stuff isn't <laughs> isn't the answer to everything, and I've just discovered I'm wrong. I mean, uh, well, I mean, don't feel bad, Bill. I discovered I was wrong a while back, and it's taken me this long to put my head around it. Yeah. And then it took it took me another couple of months to figure out how to even possibly explain this to anybody. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, know, you in all honesty, after this is over, I will be pulling this out as a clip just so that it stands alone and people can listen to it repeatedly, like I probably am going to have to, <laughs> to really well, wrap I, my head around some of it. I'll, I'll end up listening to it as well because I will be making notes of, boy, did I screw up. I could explain <laughs> this better. I could have done this better. But that's all part of, of learning in the negative feedback loop. Um but yeah, this whole disintermediation, decentralization, um, secured ledger technology. And that's what blockchain is. It's right. a freaking ledger. Yeah. Bill owes Marshall $5. Bill pays Marshall $5. Marshall pays Drop of Truth $2. Drop of Truth spends $2 at Starbucks. Drop of Truth gets one-tenth of one ounce of their overpriced coffee. <laughs> drop of truth, drinks the coffee, everything's cool. Um, it's just a ledger. Yeah. But it's a ledger that is immutable. It cannot be changed once it is validated. Right. And that's the beauty of it. You can't go back in time and change things. It's just like an accounting ledger. Yeah. The way you correct the problem is to make another entry, not to erase, not to change. But um, when you take that and run it to its logical conclusion, the world changes. Literally, yeah. um, th there Everything is no more becomes national. tokenized as well as any contracts to do anything become tokenized, right? And uh, yeah, uh, drop a truth points out here. Hang on a second, got a call that that um, we haven't escaped the concept of fiat trading. And that's absolutely true. What we've done is instead of trading national fiat, we're trading algorithmic fiat that does not change. The rules don't change. The inflation rate doesn't change. Nothing changes. It's static, which means by definition, it's stable. Yeah. Anything that is stable can be traded reliably. Um, uh, no drop, negative feedback loop. You never learn from a positive feedback loop. <laughs> never. You oscillate out of control. Uh, 
and Let me slide he hates back Starbucks. Here a couple of things. Uh, yeah, let's look at what we've got here because I have been rambling. Yeah. Um, I'm a rambling guy. R A M B L I N. System. Apostrophe. Rambling. Ah, uh, okay. Token system must be government controlled because of tax concerns. No. No. It has to be government uh, regulated, not controlled. And the regulation is everything that's a taxable event has to have the, the tax part of the contract called. And you simply regulate the, the validators so they will not accept a, a taxable event transaction without the little IRS function in there. Right. So it's not actually controlled. Uh, so the IRS, to, so like a lot of okay. this, the IRS is essentially getting what amounts to vending machine money. Yeah. They're, they're getting yeah. very small transactions in very large volumes. Yeah. As a rule. It's, uh, uh, you know, I'm constantly finding new uh, rabbit holes in this thing. <laughs> it's like, whoa, what if you applied it to music? Holy crap. What if you applied it to videos? Holy crap. What if you applied it to television distribution? Holy crap. You know, maybe <laughs> almost everything you need. think about is a holy crap moment. Yeah, you damn near need uh, sapient AIs just to um, understand it all. <laughs> yeah, uh, and no, no, no drop. I'm not being pedantic. What I what I'm explaining is when you get to algorithmic execution of contracts, the only thing that can interfere or intercept that is a mandatory function that goes in from the validators or the miners. In other words, they will not allow the, traction, uh, the, the transaction to go through without that stub function that does the IRS thing. The IRS thing. Um, we're, 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 you know, you're kind of right. It is pedantic. But when you're dealing with things that are structured algorithmically, you have to be pedantic because you're dealing with what you're dealing with. You're dealing with the algorithmic structure. Um, it's it's very precise. It's 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 incredibly precise. It's incredibly sequenced. And if you do anything out of the wrong order, you're screwed. You know. Im imagine if I if I tried to repay that loan that I made before I did it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's pedantic. But guess what? I'm screwed. <laughs> so, um. But well, if you get you the know, time uh, machine, uh, maybe the, the, you can. But <laughs> yeah, I probably could do that. Um, but but the the pedanticness, the the precision, the accuracy that you have to have means that basically financial transactions take on some of the aspects of a very very well tested and designed software system. And a lot of people are going to scream and pull their hair out when they say that. But no. The, the programming language you use for these contracts called Solidity is is a very, very good language. Um, you don't have a lot of things to worry about. It's fairly straightforward. I, I wouldn't say a lawyer could write it. And in fact, I wouldn't trust anything that a lawyer wrote, even a contract. But um, <laughs> you know, it, it is hard to make a fatal mistake in this language, which is good. So... Um, um, one of the questions yeah. I saw earlier is how you can buy this. I'm going to show something about Coinbase. Well, you can show something about Coinbase, but also look at Crypto.com. They are yeah. actually providing an interface to the Visa system that sources from your Bitcoin wallet. Oh. They have actually made that interface, and that's one of the coins that I picked up speculatively. It's only at 15 cents, and they're the one that's going to do the 60% the burn. Because that was crypto.com? Yeah, and the uh, symbol for that particular uh, token is CRO. But um, Oh, right, that's the one where you need the mobile app. Right. Yeah, yeah. can't show that very easily. No. But, but um, this one I can maybe pull But the, the, the beautiful thing, Drop, is, drop truth, is that... Um, yeah, right now the governments are big enough that they can, they can bully... Uh, people around when their currency goes to worthless 
uh, they ain't going to be big enough to bully the people around anymore, <laughs> especially if those people are on blockchain. <laughs> so, um, they'll have to talk nicely to the miners and say, okay, we're the Australian government and we need to have some taxes. Would, would you mind putting this in for anything that deals? <laughs> you know, they're, there's the old saying, he who has the gold makes the rules. And the algorithm has the gold. It okay. makes the rules. So, I have uh, an account here on um, Coinbase. Oh, yeah. A long time ago, I got a, um, a very small amount of Bitcoin. Um, 0 0.02937 uh, Bitcoin. Which is now all the way up to 138 bucks, which is way more than I originally paid for. It was a long oh, yeah. time ago. <clears throat> but you on Coinbase, and I'm not necessarily saying they're the greatest. You can do all kinds of different ones, not necessarily all the ones that uh, Marshall's talking no. about. No, but you there's can't. a fair number of them. But, if, but that's if one you place you can go. There are lots of others. Do, yeah, there are, and there are lots of better ones. Uh, Coinbase, uh, you pay for the simplicity. Trust me, you pay for the simplicity. Um, if if you want to learn more about crypto, uh, or if you want to trade it, if any of what I told you has blown your mind, the the first part when I was talking about reference currencies, about what Bitcoin is, mm -hmm. if that's screwing with your head, you do not want to trade crypto yet. Um, and by trade, I'm talking about actively trade on a daily basis. Right. You can yeah. you can hold on for dear life, and if you're going to do that, I would wait until it dips like it's dipping now. Right. And put in a couple of hundred Buy bucks. Buy low, sell and, high. Yeah, don't do it the other way. That's very bad. Or in this um, case, since we're looking at a very very high, just buy low and hang on to yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, Again, if, this if is bought, not any I, financial advice. No, it isn't. Well, I'll actually say that buy low, sell high is financial advice. It's it's very <laughs> well. See, it's, it's the only thing I walk I walk away from much of anything knowing. Yeah, <laughs> it's you um, buy low, sell high. Now, uh, pitfalls, um, fees. It comes down to fees. Mm -hmm. If, if you could do a no fee swap of dollars for Bitcoin so that, you know, it was perfectly in line and, and there was no fees and you didn't have to worry about it, trading this stuff would be child's play. But there are fees. Right. Um, they, Anytime they you make a, a exchange from one to the other, whether it's dollars, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc., there's always going to be a, an associated fee. Right. And uh, for Bitcoin, it's determined by the protocol, but you can kind of skip around that if you're willing to pay a little bit more and get higher on the priority chains for getting pushed into the blocks, which memorializes the transaction. For Ethereum, good freaking luck. It is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's called a gas fee. And I tell you, it works just like a petrogas dollar. It just goes up and up and up and up and up. Um, uh. And a lot of people go, the gas stuff is too high and I'm looking at it and once again I, I do the negative feedback loop and I and I go why is the gas tax too damn high and it's because it is being used so damn much the uh, the, the capacity of the network is being strained to the limit uh, to the point where there's actually an ethereum 2 project that's going to work on scalability a little bit better um, and speed and that should reduce the gas tax or the gas fee. Um, but that's not here yet. So guess what? <laughs> you pay in the high fees and right. the fees can be very high. Uh, my worst case was I transferred, I think two grand and the gas fee was 250 bucks. Jeez. Huh, like, jeez. <laughs> uh, <as I, laughs> Highway robbery, or I'm sorry, a cyberway robbery. You know, cyberway um, robbery. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just to I, think, I, Al I think, Gore invented all of this. 
Yeah, indeed. <sighs> um, bartering. Oh, Mark. We we now have drop a truce name. It's Mark, and we yes. may call him Mark. Hello, Mark. Uh, bartering. Um. Okay, bartering is the exchange of non fungible goods. When you get down to it. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, sheep for wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows for shovels, shovels for gold. You know, um, the problem with the bartering is non-fungible. You know, somebody, somebody may want silver really bad. Say they're a dentist. Other people don't give a damn. So you will get a higher value proposition from the dentist. But what if you don't have a dentist close by? You know, but you know somebody who barters something differently. There becomes a, a a problem with the with the non punchability um, that can be solved with a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, um, because now you have a constant value reference that you can say instead of me giving you silver or me giving you chickens, you can say I, I will give you you know ten thousand satoshi or you know one fifty thousandth of a bitcoin you know close to a dollar and you can actually run that way so it actually makes barter easier because it introduces a fungible layer on top of the barter process um and uh, very similar in a lot of ways to lincoln's greenbacks um it's a fiat currency but once again, it's not controlled by humans, it's controlled by algorithm. So, you know, that that's the key thing when you get down to it, is there ain't no human that can mess it up. Right. Um, and you've got an inflation cap on it. Yeah. Those two items are all by itself. It's like, oh, yes, I'm moving some of my dollars there. So... <laughs> now, the inflation cap is going to be the big, a big, a huge thing. I mean, just yeah. a huge thing. We've talked mm -hmm. about it offline, too, before. But, I mean, you know, the press worldwide destroyed the economy solely to make sure that President Trump wasn't reelected. I mean, they, they literally destroyed the economy. Um, and that's causing the, uh, uh, the inflation that we're seeing. Uh, yeah. It's. Well, they did a hell of a lot more than that. They actually killed people. So well, yes. And I'm I'm not being metaphorical. No, people I know. People died because of Trump derangement syndrome. But that's yep. a different topic. Yeah. Um. So, when you think about crypto, you have to think about it in terms of value store on Bitcoin. You have to think about it in terms of compute platform. Uh, you know, with a trading binge, not trading binge, um, a, a, a financial trading application platform on Ethereum. Right. So, you know, okay. it's, it's the Ethereum and then is you kind have, of the kind of the contract side. Well, the, for the longest time, they kept calling it the world computer. And that's actually a pretty decent uh, decent description. It's a world financial computer, which executes contracts. It can do. It can act as a value store. It's just those damn gas fees. Uh, <laughs> so we have to get the scaling part of that and get that worked out. Um, Ethereum has actually performed on a percentage basis better than Bitcoin has during this rise up. Really? So yeah, but getting your money in and out. Yeah, uh, I, remember, I think we talked about that with respect to mines. Um, damn, I can't get it to come back up now. But mm -hmm. mines does uh, payouts in what Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin, I guess. But you well, and the, I the talked about mines, and you were saying, or Ether was not necessarily the best way to do it, precisely because of the fees. Right. Um, yeah. You know. Every system has its problems, uh, no matter if it's algorithm driven or not. And the algorithm is what's causing the Ethereum gas prices to go up because the network is being overloaded. And so what it's trying to do is slow down the network and make it easier, you know, to actually work properly. 
and in order to do that it's increasing the gas fees algorithmically so you know it's a balancing system and once the network um, capacity and scaling capabilities increase the gas prices will go down because the algorithm can now process more transaction per unit of time you know, it, it, it's See. supply and demand there's so many compute cycles right. and you know you pay for them right. uh, and a smart contract eats, a th uh, eats gas fees because uh, you know it's looking for conditions to execute so every time it wakes up and looks for the conditions, you know, you're using a small amount of gas. Right. So it, it's eating it. So the gas fees are related to compute cycles, essentially. Yeah, or to, to the scarcity of compute cycles. Right, yeah. Uh, the, the more scarce, of the higher cycles. it is. Yeah. Bitcoin is much different. Um, the, the, the fees are related to... Uh, it's a complicated formula, but it roughly comes down to a percentage of the Bitcoin's current price. Um, that's the biggest component. But then it does minor capacity, complexity level, uh, how far you're into the happing cycle. The happing cycle is basically um, when Bitcoin started, you were you were given 50 Bitcoin if you successfully validated a block. Hmm. That's that's huge now. Yeah, fifty gigantic. Bitcoin. <laughs> um, but every four hundred and some odd transactions, the the uh, the reward gets cut and the complexity goes up. Yeah. So the re reward gets halved and the complexity doubles. So, and that is put in because compute cycles are getting cheaper. On, right. on a two-year basis so it, it's actually a, a hedge against that <laughs> so we're now down where are we at now complexity we're now down to 6.25 uh, is it no Hang on. yeah we're entering cycle four so that would be uh, 6.25 Bitcoin per block that is going to happen at the end of this year right now it's 12.5 oh, okay. um, so Oddly enough, that th this this block uh, happening also mysteriously coincides with the uh, bear and bull runs on Bitcoin. Oh, I mean, really? it fits right into right into it precisely. And if you think about it, it makes all the sense in the world. You know, with a less reward at double the the uh, effort, miners. Yeah start being basically going eh, you know maybe I'll mine Ethereum uh, well, listen, but as you get near the end of the cycle you know yeah well listen Super Crew 63 is headed out for the night it's about 1230 where I'm at almost 1240 and I think I've, I've certainly had my mind blown repeatedly <laughs> 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 so I think this might be a good place to drop off yeah, you're probably uh, probably right. You know, maybe we should do this again. Oh, um, absolutely. Or maybe we can. I don't know what we can do. Well, maybe I'd I'll like to get video on this at some point too. So. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> well, I'm at, working at least at least to to the point where I could put up diagrams. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> well, okay. Uh, I will probably okay. uh, let me see if I can find my freaking window. I have so many open now. Yeah, okay. same here. Okay, I'll probably let you drop off. And um, thanks very much for coming on and explaining this because, again, I, 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 <clears throat> I'm going to have to rewatch re this again myself a couple of times because I, at, in the middle of it I'm going, whoa, wait, okay, hold on. It's like walking into the TARDIS and discovering that it's way bigger on the inside <laughs> than it is on the outside, you know? Uh, yeah. It's well, it's that, like that. That's that is a uh, a phenomena that I experienced several times going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> so, it's I'm like, sure. Know, it's like, I've got my mind around it now. I under what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> now, why is it making that wheezing noise? Uh, yeah. It's like, <laughs> did, did somebody not? Did you release the break? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, appreciate okay, you Bill. coming on, Marshall. I'm sure I'll have you on again sometime. And 
Uh, I would think tomorrow or the next day, depending on how long it takes me to pull this out and edit and then re-encode it, I'll probably have this out as a standalone video that I'll be referencing again, I'm sure of that. So. Well, w one of the interesting things you might, well, you might be interested in, I don't know if the audience would be, is how I've set up uh, some of the software to do the algorithmic stuff by itself. It's basically a program trading platform. But, um, yeah. Well, I can take a look at of, it. I got a, I got a Raspberry Pi that's doing absolutely nothing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> there, are, there are some things that require a little bit more power. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will talk to you later, Marshall. I appreciate it very much you coming on. No problem. Thank you, Super Crew and uh, yeah, Mark. And Mark. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, <laughs> talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Okay. Well, as I say, uh, my mind blown uh, repeatedly, and uh, and at the same time, my back is hurting. So, I guess. Uh, amazingly, uh, sarcasm? Uh, no, no, um, my mind is just still wrapping my head around stuff, honestly. That was way bigger than I would have imagined it would have been. That's just astonishing to me, the whole thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be re-watching this one several times, I'm sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that, I guess that that's all the time we have. That's all we have to say about that for the moment. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. That is all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch. And do leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks. Man, we can really use them this time. I'll certainly try to get back to you. <laughs> it's a long sack of wind, but it was still very good. So thanks for watching. That is all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where you get your mind blown every time <laughs> because it's somebody or my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.